only won one. So, boy, when you can get the home field advantage, it works. Well, those are two pretty hard stadiums to play in, Beaver Stadium and Ohio Stadium, but uh, it's a great day in our stadium, and we were happy to win. Record crowd out there, over 105,000, and they gave a warm welcome to Adam Talaferro, a good warm Buckeye welcome for well, the Penn State. Well, he's a great young man, and he's worked hard, and he met a youngster from Ohio, David Schwark, that's going through the same mm -hmm. uh, problems and uh, it was good to see him here and get the ovation. Orlando Pace, of course, our honorary captain. He was open this week. Great to have him on our sideline. We almost put him in. Well, those guys have overcome. You might have needed him on the offensive line. Not on this play. Maurice Claret breaks it for 30 right off the jump. I'll tell you, it was a good trap block. Our guys caught him in basic, basic defense and uh, Maurice hit it. He had good patience and waited for the trap block. It was a big play. 30 yards on the pickup puts him over a thousand on the season. Amazing for the freshman. Here you see Ben Hartsock catching the ball out of the empty backfield. It was good to distribute the ball around to our tight ends and backs and wide receivers. And I thought Craig Krenzel the whole day had good command. Claret again, this time on second and seven, a pickup of nine. This was the play, I think, where he banged the shoulder a little bit. And, and uh, that was the same play as the one that he hit for 30 yards. And, but, uh, you know, when you get those, uh, those stingers and that type of thing, it's, that's tough duty. And, and that was it for Maurice for the day. Painful injury, we wouldn't see him again. So you got to juggle your backs just a little bit, but very capable guys back there and a quarterback making good decisions. Again, this play just trying to make the last effort. Well, that's right. You know, you can't turn the ball over, but how about this effort by Chris Gamble? Everyone talks about his defensive back play, but this play right there might have been as big a play in the football game as there was. Might have been his biggest. Stopped at midfield there, and the Buckeye defense is up to the challenge here right from the get-go. Yeah, I'll tell you what, our defense had a great plan. Uh, they did a good job of executing it. They put pressure on Mills all day long. There you see the deflection, and A.J. Hawk comes up with the interception, and, and that negated our turnover and gave us a chance to regain the field position battle. Tim Anderson got a tip on it, and the true freshman playing in place of C. Grant. We'll hear from C. Grant later in this show, but 47 with the big pick. Now comes the offense. Second and eight from the 45, a complete pass to Jenkins for a pickup of 10. You know, good job by... Michael Jenkins there catching the ball. Good throw by Craig. Good protection, and he split the defenders and got the first. Fights for that first down, and on first down, Krenzel once again doesn't find anyone. Takes it himself. Pickup of nine. Well, good effort there by Brandon Joe in the protection. The guys are working hard, and he stepped up. Nothing was open, and again, a good first down play, and we're ahead of the ticket. Didn't lead to points just yet. Next possession for Penn State. Second and one play. Getting some pressure on Zach Mills here, and Mills throughout this game seemed to get a, a little more jumpy as the game went on. Well, I'll tell you what, he, uh, he got a lot of pressure from that Buckeye defense, and, and he doesn't like to get sacked and take sacks, and so he throws it up there. Uh, you know, they did move it down the field a little bit. Here they are running the option, and uh, good-looking play by them. Uh, they called that a touchdown. It was pretty close, and uh, they're ahead at this point. I'm not sure they didn't give the touchdown to the guy who picked up the ball after it was fumbled in the end zone. <laughs> it may be because it didn't look like number five got in. Here you see the defense back to work. Play action pass and ball going out. We had great pursuit. There you see Rob Reynolds, Matt Wilhelm, Michael Doss on the way, A.J. Hawk, Chris Gamble. The whole group was there and our defense can really run. There's no question about it. Loss of one on a pass play as well. We see that time and time again with these guys chasing down the screens and now another interception on tap. Well, again, pressure there. Uh, you saw that Kenny Peterson, they threw it up there. Dustin Fox had the, had the coverage, and Will Smith came up with a big interception. And well, I tell you what, Will is a great leader and a great ball player. He was due. He told us after the game. He's dropped two of them this year. He was due to get one. <laughs> well, Will plays hard, and good things come to those who play hard. Well, the Bucks will turn that into some points here. Maurice Hall in the backfield for the Bucks, 28 gets the carry and picks up the first down. I tell you what, Maurice Hall and Lydell Ross both answered the bell. Uh, they were called to the front, and uh, I tell you, they worked hard, ran hard, pass protected, caught balls. Real proud of those two guys. Took a shot at the end zone with Jenkins, came up incomplete on third and nine. So fourth down, a 37-yard field goal from Mike Nugent, and what else? Tell you what, he knocked it through the middle, and a uh, good snap, good hold, good protection, and, and uh, Michael has been perfect on the season. 7-3 count at that point here in the second quarter. Second down and 13 for the Bucks. Maurice Hall. It's a good job dumping the ball off. Maurice made the catch and worked hard with the ball, holding on to it tight, and got us the first down, or got us close. I can't remember on that one uh, if we got the first, but uh, it was a heck of a big field position play. Pickup of 16. He did get the first down, and then 
There's a little screen back to Lydell Ross. It was a good looking play. The guy's out front and he made the big cut and uh, here we are moving the football down the field. Pickup of 28 yards on the play, but as far as the score stands, 7-3 to three is the way we end the first half in this. And having a tussle with the Nittany Lions, of course, out there. The first series, you drive down the field, you eat up a lot of the clock, you eat up a lot of yardage on the board. You use your tight ends. Ben Hartsock came in, nine catches on the season. He had three during that drive. You get it right down and don't come up with points, but the guys knew they could move the football. Well, I think they knew that, and, and they knew it was going to be a battle even after that drive as well. And it was unfortunate we didn't come up with any points, but uh, it was good to see us move it right near the end of that half. We had that unfortunate fumble mm -hmm. as we went uh, after that screen play to Lydell, and which would have had us down in scoring position. But I think the one thing we knew for sure is that if we were turning it over, we were going to have a tough time, and so we had to make sure we didn't do that anymore. We joked about Orlando Pace being on the sideline, maybe putting him in, but without Shane Olivier, you juggle some guys around, and really a testament to what they were able to do in this game against a monster of a defensive line in Penn State. Well, Penn State's off uh, defensive line is as good as it gets. Mm -hmm. uh, and I tell you what, our young guys, our inexperienced guys worked hard against them. Our young backs uh, banged it in there. Uh, it was just a, a good, classic, tough Big Ten football game. Well, we've got a classic second half for you ahead on Buckeye Football Weekly. 7-3, Bucks are down, don't panic. Talked about classic Big Ten football, Ohio State and Penn State. Love to ground it out on the ground. Did it help getting a game against Wisconsin last week where that was the idea as well to get prepared for this? Uh, no question. We needed to have a tough ball game where we had to stop both the run and the pass. It seemed like our first seven or eight games were nothing but sling it all over yeah. the place. And that was good preparation. And uh, this will have been good preparation for what lies ahead. Well, spread offenses are gone. You've shown you can win in high scoring games. This one going to be a defensive struggle all the way throughout as the Bucks take the field in the second half and start out on defense. First and ten for the Nittany Lions. Well, I tell you what, our defense set the tone. Our kickoff team did a good job and our defense just set the tone. They were hitting old number five every time he got that football and and uh, I think he knows that he met a tough defense. Felt it down the stretch. That is for certain only eight yards rushing total in the second half for Larry Johnson. Here we played the option. A.J. Hawk came, and, and if you block the linebackers, you can run option. If you can't get those linebackers blocked, option is a problem, and, and A.J. Hawk was not going to let them block him. Turning point in the game, Chris Gamble laying back. Deep third coverage. Zach Mills throws him up. <laughs> a softball. I'll tell you what, Chris said he saw his eyes, and, you know, I'm not sure anyone physically touched him. If this was flag, I'm not sure they'd have got him on that one. Chris Gamble is an extraordinary athlete. He's just smart. He's got a field savvy. Uh, glad he's on our team. Absolutely, and playing both ways in this game. He played a lot of plays. I'm afraid to count how many, but it was a bunch. Here you see the D back at it, and they're running the draw. Michael Doss. One thing is you don't want to hit plays slow because if you do, Michael Doss is going to get to you before you get very far. Silver bullet defense right there and a 10-7 Ohio State lead, one that they would not relinquish. Uh, here you see the throw out there and great coverage by Dustin Fox. He, he's under control. He gets better every day and uh, he swatted that thing away. Fox breaks it up and then back on offense. Second and 11, you get 14 from Michael Jenkins coming back for the ball. Well, here you see just a basic uh, play action pass and, and uh, Michael comes back and makes a great catch on the ground. Craig did a good job stepping up and, and uh, Michael Jenkins is always there when you need him. This time and it happens time and time again. Second and seven, decision so important at midfield. Ten yards is good on second and seven. Well, no question. Craig Frenzel, uh, I think, has a great feel for uh, our offense and, and studies our opposing defenses and he just makes good decisions throughout the course of the game. Jenkins back in it. Receivers didn't play a big role in the first half, and now they're getting into the game. Well, you know, they were bunching up a little bit, and they were jumping on our tight ends uh, uh, as the second half, second quarter, really, and second half came through, and so we went out wide, and here we move forward in the field goal range, and, and Mike Nugent again bangs it. He didn't look like he hit that one as well, and I was afraid that one might have leaked off, but once again, Mike Nugent through the uprights. 37 yards once again. He matches his first half tally and 13-7 is the count. 19 straight as he adds to his Ohio State school record. The Buckeyes have the lead and add to it with that field goal. Now notice this field position here. You know, that was the, what it was all about. And when you got him backed up, there you see Dustin Fox and David Thompson and Simon Frazier and A.J. Hawk. Uh, when you've got him backed up there, boy, you can really pin your ears back and here they're running the quarterback draw with their other quarterback. They flanked Mills out wide and our guys knew all about what was coming and, and uh, they're playing like crazy. 
from the shotgun there. And time and time again, you go to the well with that defense and content on just chewing up the clock on offense and allowing the defense to get the work done. Well, unfortunately, we turned it over, and now our defense was really put to the test. And, and uh, here they uh, flushed Mills out, and, and uh, he wasn't able to complete. In fact, Chris Gamble got his hands on it, and uh, they're punting it away down there and putting us way back. Again, it's a, it's a field position battle. We're going to have to start from our five, and, and uh, they have got a lot of pressure on us right now. That was a third and nine play that was incomplete, so the punt downed at the six-yard line. So Lydell Ross, and really, and this is the point where get what you can, don't lose the game, kick the ball, and let your defense win the game. Well, that's right. We always say that the punt is the most important play in football, and here you see great execution, mechanics, snap, Andy Groom banging the ball, uh, excellent coverage. Michael Doss ended up getting clipped uh, because he beat his man over him, and, and then all of a sudden, they're way back again, and we have regained the field position battle, which uh, our defense helped us overcome that turnover. That is another big, big play, and Joe Paterno wondering what to do next. Time running out for the Nittany Lions now down the stretch in this game. Here again, we could come after him a little bit. No one was open, and I think that was Kenny Peterson uh, making the big sack there with good pressure by Simon Frazier, and, and that was huge because they had used all their timeouts trying to, trying to keep us from burning the clock up, and so the, the pressure was on them. And You know, I'm not sure that uh, if there was any contact there, I'm not sure that ball was catchable. And a lot of times, that's what uh, was talked about when it comes to interference penalties. I, I don't know if uh, that thing would have been caught, but either way, they hadn't put two first downs together uh, all day long, so I'm not sure they were going to move the ball down the field. That is correct. Krenzel is going to run the clock out here, and that's going to wrap it up for the Buckeyes. A 13-7 win on a week when the BCS polls come out and the national spotlight on national television is on the Bucks. You uh, hold the fort down and, and win this one 13-7. That was a heck of a victory. Uh, everyone that was at Ohio Stadium had a part in that victory and, and uh, our kids played so hard and our coaches coached so hard and everyone there enjoyed it. And it was great to have Orlando Pace back. It was great to have Adam Talaferro back in our stadium. Uh, we had a special tribute to the uh, deceased uh, Cleveland Indians mm -hmm. trainer Jimmy Warfield who was a Penn State and Ohio State backer who just uh, endowed scholarships for both. It was a special day. And for a lot of people. A good day to get in the win column. You talk about the punt being the, the best play or the uh, most important play. You call timeout, you run a quarterback sneak, set up the punt for Andy Groom, he bombs one, okay, and then you get the penalty, which puts them first and ten at their own 21-yard line. He's kicking from his own end zone. That's right. You talk about a swing in field position, but big games are determined by field position, and we can never short sell the importance of special teams. They are the difference. And you shut down a Penn State team that uh, loves to get out and get after you on first down. 43% of their total yardage gained on first down. So shut them down across the board, and the Buckeyes get the win. We're back on Buckeye Football Weekly.